Let me try and contrast the idea of sequence with the other access structures we've talked about. Uh, first, sequences versus hierarchies. In a book, these two concepts are actually quite related. The sequence of the book follows a branch-wise traverse of the hierarchy of the book. Unpacking that a little bit, the order of the pages in a book follows the table of contents. Right? That's, the, that's the way that, I, uh, that you would have understood that concept before coming into this class. I hope that now you can understand it as the sequence of a book follows a branch-wise traverse of the hierarchy of the book which means that we go through all of the child, all the children of every branch before we go on to the siblings of the branch. And if you think about the way a book is organized, it's obviously that way, right? All of the, all of the sections under chapter one are all complete in the book, are all, all are shown in the book before we go on to chapter two. Similarly, all the paragraphs under section one are outlined or sequentially put in the book before we go on to heading level or heading number two. So um, there's a natural, or a, let's call it a primary sequence, um, that is in books and can also be implied in, in, uh, in non-book uh, publications. So you have a hierarchy representing, the, um, representing the, the way the book is structured. As I've said before, we, we generally believe that hierarchies are comprehensive, that is they have all of the information that's in the information base um, listed in them. And it's natural to say if I was going to create one sequence, it would be a sequence that follows the hierarchy. And the thing that's next in the sequence is the thing that's next in a branch-wise way next in the, um, in the hierarchy. So there's a primary hierarchy. So in a way, you might say that a hierarchy almost implies or, um, or leads you towards a primary sequence, a, a, a first order sequence. And that's really almost entirely because of the conventions that have been um, given to us by, by books. Um, now on the other hand, you wouldn't say that because I have a sequence, it implies any sort of hierarchy. In fact, quite the opposite. A sequence is generally thought of as, um, as a sequence of peer items, as an ordering of items that are all at the same level or of the same kind or of the same variety. So if I take you through a sequence of steps, for example, you don't think that one step is a child of the other step, you think that one step is a peer of the other step. So hierarchy, to some extent, implies, um, implies sequence, but sequence doesn't necessarily imply hierarchy. Okay, sequences versus um, associations. A sequence is a single point-to-point, -point, uh, excuse me, an association is a single point-to-point -point link from one item to another. And a sequence is an ordered list of those links. So in some sense, the sequence is link, 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 link. But what's interesting or useful, most useful to us about the sequence is not the fact that item A is linked to item B, but that the entire set of items is, is, um, is represented by whatever the sequence is. And let's take a procedure because it's really easy to understand. The procedure is the umbrella that links all of the steps together. We're not particularly concerned that step two is linked to step one. What we're really concerned about is that step one through step ten are all, um, are all included in the sequence. So the, each, each transition from step to step can be thought of as an association, although not necessarily. We'll see some examples, for example, we'll see uh, Audi examples of sequences, and in that example, uh, step one is not directly linked to step two. Um, but you can say that step one and step two have this point-to-point -point association, but it's the entire sequence or the, and the, the entire set of items linked together that really constitutes the sequence. And finally, sequences versus index. This is probably the one that, um, that gives my students the most heartburn. How do I tell a sequence from an index? They all oftentimes look exactly the same. For example, a title index is an alphabetical listing of titles. Well, why isn't that a sequence of titles? It looks like a sequence of titles. I go from title one to title two to title three to title four. The dead giveaway and what I see as, as, the, as the, you know, the obvious difference between an index and a, um, and a sequence is that the index is meant to be randomly uh, accessed. That is, you wouldn't normally go from the titles that begin with A to the titles that begin with Z. And if you were, if you were, if it was implied that you go from the titles that begin with A to the titles that begin with Z, like for example, it's a children's book and we want to give an example of A's, then B's, then C's, then D's, then it's a sequence. So that, that's actually a, a really nice example. So we have, you know, A is for alligators and B is bursting balloons, right? So we have alligators bursting balloons. Well, that's an alphabetical index of words, but actually it's a sequence because what we're trying to convey with that ordering of, of information is a comes before B, comes before C, comes before D. But if we just have an alphabetical index of titles, what we're assuming is that you know A comes before B, 
Um, and what I'm really trying to do is get you to the J's without having to go through all of the A's and the B's, because you can go directly into the J's. So the hallmark or the big really defining difference between an index and a sequence is that the index um, is random access and the sequence is sequential access. Uh, anything else I want to say about that? Oh, yeah. Um, on the other hand, the method to produce the list, the sequential list, may very well be the same in both cases. And the, the example of the title index I gave you is a, is a good example. If I had alligators, balloons, catching colds, um, and I alphabetized them, I sorted them alphabetically, it would give me my sequence. It's not the fact that it's sorted. It's not the fact, it's not the reason, or that's, the, that's not the reason to make it an index or a sequence. The reason to differentiate between an index and a sequence is not because one is sorted and the other one isn't. The way to differentiate them is, is one defined so that you go from the beginning to the end, and the other is defined so that you don't have to go from the beginning to the end. Okay, so a, a sequence can be hand-ordered, or it can be automatically ordered. And that gives us the idea of the, of the results list. For example, a full text search that gives us back a results list. Those are not ordered randomly. They're not ordered in such a way that you're supposed to go to any particular one at any time. And, but they are, they, are, um, uh, they are indexed. Well, wrong use of the term. They are sorted. They're sorted by rank. So one has a higher rank than the other, so it comes to the top of the list. And so you might say, well, isn't that an index by rank? And I would say, no, it's sorted by rank. But the, uh, the idea of producing a results list is that you'll look at the first result, then look at the second result, then look at the third result, et cetera. Um, you're supposed to go through there in order. The ones at the top are the ones that you're supposed to look at first. So in that sense, it's a sequence and not an index.